A policeman finds a little boy hiding in an abandoned trailer in the middle of the forest. He was shocked to discover who the little boy really was and that he wasn't alone. It was a typical afternoon at a police station in a small town, where the pace of activity was already starting to slow down in anticipation of the end of another workday. Donald, an experienced policeman with years of service, was already organizing his belongings, preparing to return to the comfort of his home, when the phone broke the silence in the room. Just when it's time to leave. He joked to his partner before answering the phone. However, it was a terrified voice that called, Hello? I'm here in the woods, and I see a light coming from the abandoned trailer. The voice was that of a camper who was passing through the woods, showing a mixture of curiosity and fear. But there's a strange noise coming from there. Please, come quickly. Donald, maintaining the calm that experience gave him, answered firmly, Understood, sir. We'll be there shortly. The man then turned to one of his colleagues, informing him that he had left to check on the situation. His partner grumbled, frustrated by the frequency of this occurrences. It's probably just some addicts again. The area in question had become a trouble spot, often associated with illegal activities and the presence of drug addicts. Donald grabbed the car keys, feeling the weight of responsibility as he headed into the forest. The abandoned trailer, situated right in the heart of the dense vegetation, was famous for its urban legends, full of stories about ghostly apparitions and unexplained phenomenons. But for the man, these were just tales to scare children and unsuspecting tourists. Ghosts, huh? He whispered to himself with a slightly sarcastic smile on his lips. These kids are so reckless. The road to the woods was familiar, but with the night setting in, the atmosphere was different. As the sun set, giving way to darkness, the forest seemed to take on a life of its own. Distant sounds of nocturnal animals filled the air, and the cool breeze made the trees whisper among themselves. Donald, although skeptical of the supernatural, couldn't help but shiver as he drove deeper and deeper into the forest, with only the light of the headlights cutting through the darkness ahead. The policeman was alert, his senses heightened not only by the possibility of finding something illegal, but also by the instinct for self-protection that anyone would feel when venturing into such an isolated and mysterious area at night. The stories about the abandoned trailer came to mind, not as a fear, but as a reminder that expecting the unexpected was part of his profession. Finally, he reached a point where the road gave way to the wilderness, marking the end of the line for any vehicle. From then on, any progress would have to be made on foot. Donald parked the car, taking one last look at the path he had taken before venturing into the forest and into the unknown. With the dark cloak of the dense forest enveloping everything around him, the policeman felt the weight of loneliness and, although he didn't want to admit it, fear. His heart was pounding, not just from the physical effort, but from the tension of what he might encounter. In one hand, he held his gun firmly, ready to face any danger. In the other, a flashlight, its dim light struggling against the oppressive darkness of the night. The winds whispered among the trees, carrying with them the echoes of horror stories that had happened in that same forest. Donald remembered the crimes he had investigated there, the deaths and the murders, and the shadows that still roam the place. Unsolved cases, bodies found with no explanation, strange rituals performed in the heart of the forest. These memories floated through his mind, feeding the tension that grew with every step. However, his courage and sense of duty drove him forward. The man knew that no matter what he encountered, his mission was to protect and serve people, to face the danger, to keep others safe. The forest seemed alive, reacting to his presence with noises that constantly made him turn and look around, pointing the flashlight at the trees that responded with silence. As he approached the trailer, he noticed that the camper who had made the call was gone as expected, for only a fool would stay there after dark. Prudence or fear had driven him away, leaving only the mystery for Donald to face. And that's when he saw the small light emanating from inside the abandoned trailer. It was the only sign of life in that almost touchable darkness. The policeman was convinced that he would find some reckless teenagers with illicit substances, lost in the illusion that this forgotten place offered some refuge from the consequences of their actions. With his heavy breathing and his heart still racing with adrenaline, Donald moved forward cautiously, 
each step carefully calculated to avoid unnecessary noise. The hand holding the gun trembled slightly, not from fear, but from anticipation of the imminent confrontation. He was ready to act, to impose the law even in that corner forgotten by the world. When he reached the door of the trailer, the policeman paused, gathering his strength and preparing himself for what was to come. Come on, here we go. With a quick, decisive movement, he broke the door with the strength of someone who is used to facing bad situations. The trailer shook with Donald's abrupt entrance, announcing his presence to whoever or whatever was waiting inside. Police, freeze! Donald shouted, already positioning himself near the door to prevent any attempt to escape. But the silence that followed was almost deafening. There was no movement, no response, just the echo of his own voice dispersing through the confined space. Surprised, he frowned in confusion. Huh? His mind was working frantically to understand the situation. He began to advance cautiously through the trailer, each step amplified by the silence. I was sure there was someone. He whispered, looking at a small fire made of some stones and twigs in the middle of the trailer. It's the police! Come out wherever you are! He shouted, still looking for someone. Then a subtle, almost muffled noise came from the back of the trailer, attracting his attention and bringing back the fear. The policeman, gun in hand, could hear his heart beating in his chest and his heavy breathing, which echoed in his ears along with the distant sound of the leaves being stirred by the wind outside. As he approached what he assumed was the bathroom door, he hesitated for a moment before opening it. Freeze! He shouted, but what he saw left him completely paralyzed. The man held his breath. What? He whispered, immediately lowering his gun at the scene. It was a little boy, cowering and trembling with fear, looking at the policeman with wide eyes, all dirty, shirtless and malnourished, clearly freezing to death. Donald was speechless. His training and years of service had not prepared him to face something like this. What are you doing here, kid? He bent down, trying to maintain a soft voice, realizing the terror in the child's eyes at the sight of the gun. The man quickly put the gun away, trying to show that he was not a threat. Still feeling the chill that permeated the place, he took off his coat and wrapped it around the little boy, trying to offer him some comfort. What is he doing here all alone? He wondered while his mind tried to make sense of it all. Where are your parents, buddy? He asked, but the boy didn't answer, only shivered, and the sound of his rumbling belly roared loud enough to make the policeman's heart ache. The officer quickly looked around, looking for someone responsible for the child, but it became clear that he was alone. Preparing to take the boy to the police station, Donald helped him up. However, at that moment, as the little boy left the bathroom, something else caught Donald's attention, something that left him paralyzed again. The little boy was not alone. But what did Donald see that shocked him so much? And how had that boy ended up there, alone? The answer to his questions was unfolding before his eyes, revealing a story as disturbing as it was unexpected. It turned out that the little ragged and hungry boy in front of him was Ben. And after a few moments of tension, the boy began to talk to the officer, telling him something that would turn his world around. The policeman began to recognize him as the boy who had been missing for six months. He recalled a case that left the local community in mourning. A terrible accident involving a young mother and her son shocked the whole town. The woman had unfortunately lost control of the car and crashed into a tree, resulting in her immediate death. However, her son, Ben, was never found, leaving a painful and unsolved mystery. But what nobody knew was what had happened to him or the reason for the accident, and all they could find out was that the car's brakes apparently didn't work. It was only after he shared his story that the truth began to emerge, a truth that would shake the policeman to the core. Ben, in a shaky but clear voice, revealed that the person responsible for the accident was none other than his own father. His father, Dean, consumed by jealousy and a refusal to accept the end of his marriage, was responsible for the accident that took his wife's life by cutting the brakes on her car. She planned to leave him, build a new life in another city, and take her son away from the aggressive, horrible man he was. But Dean wasn't gonna let that happen. When faced with the horrendous crime he had committed and seeing his son unconscious, the father made a desperate and macabre decision. 
He took Ben far away from the scene of the accident to a secluded and abandoned cabin in the woods that he had inherited from his family. He hoped to hide his actions and have a fresh start out of the eyes of the law. Donald listened to Ben's story, as if each word increased his horror and sympathy for the boy. It was unimaginable that a father could do such a terrible thing to his own son, and the policeman's mind was trying to process the implications of what he had just discovered. This whole time, you were alive, he thought, as the little boy told his story. The mystery of Ben's disappearance, which had baffled the community and the police for months, was finally beginning to unravel, but the truth was much darker than anyone could have anticipated. In that isolated cabin, hidden by the dense vegetation of the forest, the boy's life was marked by desperate attempts to escape not only physical captivity, but also the oppressive shadow of a father whose presence became synonymous with fear and pain. The man, who was supposed to be a figure of protection and affection, was actually the source of all Ben's suffering. Harsh, severe, and incapable of any gesture of genuine love, he tried in his own twisted way to forge some kind of bond with him, but his attempts were as brutal as his personality. The boy, even at the age of eight, understood the terrible truth behind his mother's death, filling his heart with resentment and pain and feeding his desire to run away. I hate him! I hate him! The little boy repeated to himself every day, so as not to forget who made his life a living hell. He tried to escape several times, but each failed attempt only reinforced the cruel reality of his situation. Captured after each escape, he returned to the cabin, increasingly desperate and lost in his own sadness. But the little boy's story took an unexpected turn when a dog appeared at the cabin. Hungry, the dog looked for food for its puppies, a vision of motherhood and care that the boy had not seen for a long time. But Dean, in his usual brutality, as soon as he laid eyes on the dog and its little ones, tried to put an end to the animals. He grabbed a shotgun and started firing wildly. The poor mother dog, in an instinct of survival and protection, jumped in front of her puppies, taking several shots, and, as a last act of defense, attacked the man, causing him to fall and fatally hit the back of his head on the ground. This moment of chaos and violence, however, had its consequences. As well as injuring the dog, Dean also managed to kill almost all the puppies. The little boy, witness to this tumultuous scene, saw the wounded mother walking around her puppies and crying, howling in grief, until she found one of her puppies who hadn't been shot and managed to survive. Ben approached them and saw the heartbreaking scene. The poor mother in her last moments cuddled up with her puppy, crying beside her. Moved by an impulse of compassion and seeing a chance to change his bleak reality, the little boy made a brave decision. With the puppy in his arms, the boy ran through the forest, driven by a mixture of fear and hope. His young heart beat loudly against his chest, with each step taking him away from the past and closer to an uncertainty that, however frightening, represented freedom. That's how he found the abandoned trailer and saw an opportunity to hide, to rest, and plan his next move. Inside the trailer, Ben, with the puppy by his side, managed to make a fire with some stones and twigs, a simple skill he had learned at school, but which now meant survival. It was this faint light, a sign of life in the dark vastness of the forest, that caught the camper's attention, and later, that of police officer Donald. When Ben heard the door being burst open, he was seized by a sudden terror and fear that his father had found him, so he hid in the bathroom, hugging the puppy. After the whirlwind of events in the forest, Donald called for reinforcements, and soon the police finally arrived at the cabin and confirmed what had happened, the death of the man responsible for so much suffering, Dean. At that moment, Ben, the little boy who had faced adversity that defied his young age, was finally safe. But safety came at a price. Sitting in the ambulance, holding the little puppy now wrapped in a blanket, he cried, not out of fear, but because of the reality that he was now completely alone. Donald, the policeman who had rescued Ben, watched him, his heart heavy with the boy's sadness. Moved by a mixture of compassion and determination, he approached the little boy, crouching down to be at his level. You're not alone, Ben. You're staying with me and my wife until we find a good place for you, okay? You're safe now. 
His voice was firm but gentle, trying to convey the security that the poor thing so desperately needed. The news came as a surprise to the little boy, his watery eyes meeting the officers. He hugged him, and a spark of hope shone for the first time in a long time. The policeman and his wife, who until then had had no children, welcomed Ben and the puppy into their home. For the couple, the arrival of the two brought a new light into their lives, filling the house with a joy they hadn't felt for a long time. Donaldo went to work every morning with a new mood, looking forward to going home, knowing that he would be greeted by happy noises, games, and barking. As the months went by, the bond between the couple and the little boy, and also the puppy, strengthened in ways that neither of them could have foreseen. Their life, once calm and routine, was now filled with laughter and genuine happiness. Six months later, and what began as a charitable gesture became an unbreakable bond. Donald's heart was irrevocably attached to Ben and the puppy who had brought them so much love. Recognizing the depth of their feelings, they made the decision to officially adopt the little boy and his canine companion, making them a real family. The adoption was a process full of emotion and joy, marking the beginning of a new chapter in everyone's lives. Ben, who had faced darkness and loneliness, found a family that loved and protected him. And so, between playing in the yard, having dinner and quiet nights under the same roof, they built a life together. A life that, no matter what happened, they would always be a family. And if you like this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.